Welcome to our Faith, Hope, and Love television ministry, sponsored by the new Greenbook.biz, the world's premier black business directory. We are broadcasting from our worship campus located here in the city of Memphis, Tennessee. We are the church where family comes together, and everything begins with it is finished. Now please receive our senior pastor, Jeff Galmore, as we join our service already in progress. Praise God. Y'all do me a favor. Let's hold up your Bible and device and say with me, say, Father, thank you that I have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to me right now. Amen. Praise God. This Memorial Day weekend, we have a word from God in the house. Amen. And uh, today, for a few seconds, we're going to talk about growing in grace and the era of holiness doctrine. Just hold on to your seats. We're going to make it plain today. Amen. Uh, back in November of 23, I taught a message entitled, What is the Gospel? And that, that message is available online for you to go and review. And basically, uh, the summary of that message was that the gospel is that we were separated from God because of man's sin. Anybody remember that? When Adam fell, it separated us. We, we as humans suffer spiritual death. And we were separated from God. Well, Jesus came along and, and the veil was torn, signifying that we're now reconnected to God. Amen. All right, y'all turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're going to read verses 17 through 19. Jesus came, he hung, bled, and died, he rose again, and the veil was torn, signifying that we are now reconnected to our Father God. So here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, the scripture means, this means that anyone, if y'all say anyone, anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. That's what the King James says. All of this is a gift from God. If y'all say a gift. Trey, I just got to do this real quickly. If it's a gift, that means somebody gave it to you. Amen. We were saying that's very important. You didn't earn it. It was given to you. Okay, that means it's a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ and has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sin against them. Can you receive this, church? This is not too heavy, is it? Amen. Amen. God was reconciling us to himself through Christ, no longer counting our sins against us. Don't miss this, George. This is the whole message right here. You have been reconciled. Amen. Y'all say reconciled. Amen. We've been reconciled. And, and listen, bro, there's nothing you did to earn being reconciled. Amen. That you did. It was a gift from God. God reconciled us to himself. It was a gift. Now, now, stay with me, church. I'm moving quickly. If you look at the screen, if we have been reconciled, Max, to God, that means that everything we had before Adam messed up is supposed to be returned to our life because we've been reconciled. So, so our lives should look like a flourishing, wonderful garden. Are y'all with me? That's what your life should look like. It should be a flourishing garden as opposed to a dead garden. It's supposed to be full of life and vegetation. Amen? Go to Isaiah with me, please. Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 3. Let's put some scripture on. Verse 1 and 3, y'all receive this with me. In Isaiah 61, I'm giving you Bible. It says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy, there's joy again, for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Watch this. 
that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Isn't that wonderful? I'm giving you Bible that God says, the spirit of the Lord is on me. This is Isaiah prophesying what Jesus was going to say. Jesus stood up in the temple and read this very scripture. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He's anointed me to announce to you that you've been reconciled. Watch this, and don't miss the bottom end of that verse. I, I want to bless you so much until you're like trees of righteousness. And watch this. You see the scripture with me? And you're going to bring glory to God because of what's on your life. Isn't that good news? He literally said to us, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. God wants to show us all. He wants us to flourish so much until we show off for our God. And people look at us and go, man, look at those people over there. Those are some blessed people. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We've been reconciled. Go turn to Matthew chapter 12. In verse 33, Matthew 12 and verse 33, trees of righteousness. In the book of Matthew, chapter 12, and verse 33, I'm going to use the New King James Version for this particular scripture, Brother Gabe, and it says, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for a tree is known by its fruit. Church, you receiving with me? Hallelujah. How do you know what type of tree we're dealing with? By its fruit, Dre. It's by its fruit. Y'all might not know it yet, but, but I'm setting y'all up real good, SEC. I'm setting y'all I'm setting y'all up real good. Jesus said, This is how you know if somebody's teaching you the right gospel or not. Look at the fruit. A tree is known by its fruit. This is how you keep from being deceived. You know a tree by its fruit. Today, our message, we're talking about growing in grace. And the era of the holiness doctrine. The era of the holiness doctrine. You look at the screen with me, you'll see a tree that's barren. Does this look like God to you all? Does it look like God at all? Does that look like God? Does it look like God at all? Stay with me, church. I'm turning the corner right now. These are current, right now, up-to-date stats. At this very moment, in the holiness capital of the world, and I don't say that facetiously, this is the headquarters of the holiness doctrine. Here in the city, right now, we are top three in murders in the nation. If y'all don't know your stats here in the city, where we're sitting right now, Memphis has broken homicides records the last couple of years. Over 400 murders of our own people. Watch this, and 95% of them black. We're number three, we're top three in assaults in the entire nation. We're top three in robbery in the entire nation. Stay with me, churches. Good church. Watch this. Right now, at this very moment, they say Shelby County is leading the nation in brand new HIV cases at this very moment. There is an outbreak happening in our city right now. And this is from the Commercial Appeal. This is a published article saying that the health officials are being quiet about it. For some reason, they don't want to set off an alarm and, and send everybody into panic. So they're not talking about it. But right now, we're having an HIV outbreak in the city right now. Right now. Talk about trees of righteousness. Talking about flourishing, being reconciled to God. Amen. Uh, here's an article 
Right now, this article was released a couple of days ago, and it talks about the coalition aims to break cycle of poverty in Memphis. So there's this coalition that's supposed to be getting together right now, and they're supposed to be putting together a plan where they're going to try to infuse $1.4 billion into the city. That's what they say. That's what they say. Here in the article, if you look at the bottom with me, in, or, uh, right here where I have the circle, it says, uh, the median income for black people in this city is $41,000, $42,000 a year, compared to $77,000 for white people, a gap of about $35,000. While both measures represent growth from the previous report, the gap also grew. In other words, it's growing. Further, while the poverty rate for Memphis black population is 25%, it's only 12 for white Memphians. Go down to the highlighted area, and it says, Mandy Spears of the Sycamore Institute found that a child who grew up in low-income home in Midtown had about a 16% chance of becoming a high-income earning adult. One mile away in North Memphis, a low-income child has less than a 1% chance of succeeding. Listen, I know they can manipulate stats sometimes. You know, Marvis, our newsman is here. And I say that in honor of his, I respect his gift. Thank God he's at our church. And Marvis knows that they can fix, make, make stories say what they want to say. But I want to talk to the FCC who live here, the people who operate here, and you know this is the truth. At this very moment, if you go about a mile down the road, they're getting ready to build a brand new park called, uh, it's a new, it's a new uh, 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 oasis they're building in South Haven. We're going to have shopping centers, a pickleball court, and all kinds of fun things. You go just a few more miles down the road in Hernando, and they're building a whole new town center. At this moment, they broke ground on it the other day. They broke ground on it. So, so while we're running up the numbers in murder and robbery and crime and HIV, just a mile down the road, they're building an oasis. We're talking about trees of righteousness, talking about growing grace in the era of the holiness doctrine. Now, I need you to answer me a question, church. If we've taught holiness, in this city for more than 50 years, how is it possible that our tree looks like this? You got to give me some answers. Because I, for one, I'm not going to let you make a fool out of me. This is literally our tree. And we preach holiness for more than 50 years. Praise the Lord. Growing grace and the era of the holiness doctrine. Answer me a quick question, church. If you heard holiness preached at you and that's your result, if that's the fruit that's on your tree, would you continue to follow that? No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't do it, would you? And that's exactly what these young people are saying out here in the street. We're not going with that. We're not buying that. Amen. The era of the holiness doctrine, growing in grace. They're not going for it. You know, I'm turning the corner on you real quick. I got to cut across the veil. If you look at the screen with me, here's what religion versus the gospel looks like. Religion says. The holiness doctrine says, I got to obey God or he's not going to bless me. Now, listen, church, I got to move quickly. Have y'all not heard that talk to you? Is that not the way the holiness doctrine has been presented to you? If you live holy, then God's going to bless you. And if you don't live holy, then you're not going to get anything from God. That is what we've been taught for 50 plus years or more. Amen. Praise the Lord. I hear, I know y'all shout. Here's what the gospel really says. The gospel says what I just read to you at the beginning of the message, we have been reconciled. You've already been accepted. God has already accepted you. You It's a free gift. It has nothing to do with whether you get it all right today or all wrong. Jesus has already made the way for you. You're already accepted. Now that's the gospel. Amen. Pastor Sam is getting ready to bless us with a series. Uh, she's going to be teaching on the unconditional love of God. Because we've been taught dogma. We've been taught condemnation for so long. 
I tell you, we don't even believe God loves us. The church has done a horrible job of presenting the holiness doctrine. A horrible job. And God has sent this church and this preacher to uproot this false presentation of the gospel. Amen. We've already been accepted. The, the religion tells you uh, that it, your, your motiva the motivation is fear and, and, and insecurity. Y'all don't tell the truth. And you, you, if, you, if you don't live right, you're going to hell. They used to tell you that on a regular basis. They used to send you to hell, man, for just about anything. You go to hell. Amen. Y'all don't tell the truth. Yeah. Don't let that in. Lord help me. My Bernie Mac almost came out. Don't do me. <laughs> don't, do, don't do me. I know. I've been in church my whole life. Man, they send you to hell in a minute. You go to hell, sir. You go to hell. Religion tells you I got to obey God in order to get things from God. The gospel says that I get to obey God because he's been so good to me. Amen. Here's the real gospel. When you accept how much Jesus loves you, holiness is a byproduct of allowing Jesus to work inside of you. You will become more like him every day. It's not the other way around. It's not that you got to come up to some standard or God's not going to accept you. That is not true. Amen. Praise the Lord. The error of the holiness doctrine is that it places the focus of sinful, the focus on sinful flesh and not Jesus Christ. I want to say that again, church. The error of the holiness doctrine is it places a focus on your sinful flesh and not Jesus Christ. So I want y'all to receive this here in FCC. I'm establishing doctrine in this church. Anytime somebody places the focus more on you than Jesus, you need to run. You need to lift up a red flag. That's a red flag. The gospel message is about Jesus Christ. Amen. We receive. I need a mic stand. I need a mic stand. Y'all see this mic stand? Let's say this mic stand represents your sin. Let's say, let's, let's say it represents your sin and, and all the sin you committed uh, uh, and all the sin that you don't commit. Amen. You see, that's, that's your sin. Well, I'm telling you that when Jesus shows up, here is grace. And whatever sin you got, grace covers your sin. It's, grace is more than your sin. Amen. We receive. We receive. That's what grace does. Grace has the power to break the sin curse. It has more power than the sin curse. It has the ability to cover and to swallow up your sin. Religion, all it does is tell you how much you're a sinner. Okay, sir. Okay, I know I messed up, but can you help me? Can you give me some answers? How do I fix it? How do I get it over and out of my life? Don't just sit here and tell me about sin. So anytime you hear preaching and somebody's talking about sin more than they are talking about Jesus, who is the cure for sin, then you're in the wrong place. Amen. Who is he? You're in the wrong house. Jesus obliterated sin. To the point to the scripture we just read in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says, when God is no longer imputing their trespasses to them. We just read it. Why? Why? Because Jesus paid for it. <laughs> they going to get you. That just makes religious demons so mad. It just gets them so upset. <laughs> just be mad. <laughs> Listen, here, here's what this fake holiness doctrine does to the church. I'm closing, church. I'm getting close to my close. Stay with me, church. Is ready. You got the, the air and hold this doctrine. This is the fruit that you get. It makes you pretend like you're happy when you ain't happy at all. Yes, it does. Let me keep moving. This is this big hold this doctrine. It makes you pretend like you delivered when you know you ain't delivered. They'll come to church to you and act like they're happy and whole, and, and, and at home, their house is a mess. 
You're not delivered. You look at your children and tell them you're not delivered. Praise the Lord. Let me keep moving. It'll make you pretend like you're blessed when you know you're not blessed. It'll make you pretend like you're better than the next person when you're way worse than the next person. You got this false persona uh, that, you, that you live in you know, some super sane, holy life when the devil is a lie. You know that's a lie. You know it's a lie. You pretend like you haven't fallen when you ain't having no fun at all. And you pretend like you're mistake free. Praise the Lord. The errant holiness doctrine. Y'all turn to Matthew chapter 23, please. Verse 5. I'm moving very quickly. Y'all give me about eight more minutes. Eight more minutes. I appreciate your time and attention today. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 1 through 5. The scripture reads, Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of religious law. Who was he talking to? The teachers of religious law and the Pharisees are the official are, are the official interpreters of the law of Moses. So, so practice and obey whatever they tell you, but don't follow their example, but they don't practice what they teach. They crush people with unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to ease the burden. Everything they do is for a show. On their arms, they wear extra wide prayer boxes with scriptures verses inside, and they wear robes with extra long tassels because they try to make you believe they're holy. Now in Matthew 23, drop down to 27, please. Verse 27. Verse 27 is reading, What sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law, you Pharisees, hypocrites? For you like whitewashed tombs, beautiful on the outside, but filled on the inside with dead people's bones and all sorts of impurity. I believe you look like righteous people. You put on a good show, but inwardly your hearts are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness. I'm giving you Bible today. Let's look on the Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Luke 16, 15. I'll move it quickly. Luke 16, 15, please watch the replay. Luke 16, 15, then he said to them, you like to appear righteous in public, but God knows your heart. You lie and wonder you. What this world honors is detestable in the sight of God. You can fool them, but you're not fooling God. You mean as a junkyard dog. Mean as a snake. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, please. We move it quickly. 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge his appearance by the height of what, because I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by their outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Amen. Praise God. Andrew Murray is one of my favorite authors. I have a book on the blood of Jesus by Andrew Murray. It's a powerful book. I keep it close to me. On the blood of Jesus Christ. It's called The Blood. You look it up. It's by Andrew Murray. I would, I would recommend that book. Andrew Murray, one of the greatest teachers of our time, said, there is no pride so dangerous, so subtle, so insidious as a pride of holiness. There's no pride so dangerous as the pride of holiness. The word holiness is used 43 times in the entire Bible. It's only used 12 times in the New Testament. I'm out of time today. If I had time, I would go through all 12 of them with you, and I would prove to you that Anytime you hear people preaching the holiness, the holiness doctrine, they are using these 12 times in the New Testament out of context. Because you can't earn your way to God. Amen. God wouldn't turn around and tell you it's a free Jesus, I reconciled you to me by Je through Jesus Christ, and you've got to have faith in Christ to come to me. He wouldn't tell you that and then turn around and tell you you got to live holy to get to me. They take the holiness word out of context and use it as a, a ramming rod to beat other people across the heap. The error of the holiness doctrine. I'm closing right now. I'm closing right now. TG, y'all give me just a few more minutes. Just a few more minutes. I asked about eight a few seconds ago. Marriage. 
money, healing, family, abundance, church, destiny. If you look at the screen with me, that river of life that I talked about at the beginning of my sermon, when your life is supposed to be flourishing, like a well-watered garden, and everything in your life is supposed to have life springing forth, could it be possible that there's a dam holding up your river, and that dam is called the pride of holiness? This fake persona that you got on, like you live in some super clean life, and God is rejecting that fakeness. Can I prove it to you? Can I prove it to you as we close? I got three scripture and then I'm done. TJ, after I get to this last one, you can come on. Philippians 3, 9, 3, 1 through 9, please. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians 3. We're going to read verses 1 through 9. Y'all see these three scriptures? This is it for the day. Gabe, this is it. I need you to take these into the soul. Philippians chapter 3. We're going to read verses 1 through 9. Here it is. Here it is. And this is Paul talking. He says, whatever happens, my dear brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. I never get tired of telling you these things, and I do it to safeguard your faith. Watch out for those dogs, those people who do evil, those mutilators who say you must be circumcised to be saved. You must be holy to be saved. But we who worship by the Spirit of God are the ones who are truly circumcised. We rely on what Christ Jesus has done for us. Ooh, that good news. Ooh, praise the Lord. Amen. We're not relying on our own strength. We rely on what Jesus has done for us. We put no confidence in human effort. Though I could have confidence in my own effort, if anyone could, indeed, if others have reason for confidence in their own effort, I have even more. I was circumcised when I was eight days old. That was Jewish custom. I'm a pure-blooded citizen of a pure-blooded citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew, if there ever was one. I was a member of the Pharisees who demanded the strictest obedience to the Jewish law. I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church, and as for righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless, and when compared to the infinite value of Lord Jesus Christ, for his sake I have disregarded, discarded everything else. I count it as rubbish, as garbage, so that I can gain Christ. In the good news, take your holiness and knock it off. It ain't worth a quarter. Praise God. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5 through 6, please. While you turn to First Peter chapter 5, the last verse of that, Paul said, I no longer count my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with him depends on faith. Isn't that good news? First Peter chapter 5, we're going to read verse 5 through 6. In the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders. And all of you dress yourselves in humility as you relate to one another. For God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time, he'll lift you up and up. God resists proud people. Andrew Murray says there's no pride like the pride of holy. Could that be why? Our tree looks like it looks. Because we're walking around this pompous, proud, arrogant attitude like we got it right. And you can't go nowhere in this city and eat, sit down and eat in peace. Not one place in this city can you go and just sit down and not have to worry about crime creeping up on you. Not one place. Praise the Lord. Last scripture, 2 Peter chapter 3, and verse 18. This last scripture here, TJ, if y'all wouldn't mind. This last scripture here, if you go read the context of this scripture, 
This passage is talking about the coming of Christ and how he's coming. And the writer says, because we know he's coming, don't let anybody pull you away from Jesus Christ. Don't let anybody pull you into some other doctrine, some other gospel. Don't let them pull you away from Christ. Here it is. Here it, is. it says, where? The verse 17. You therefore, the Lord, since you know this beforehand, beware, lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error, the error of holiness, the error of the wicked. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Thank you, the church. God has sent me here today. I'm telling you, he sent us as a church to preach a different message. Really, it's not a different message. It's a message that's been in the Bible the whole time. And that is to grow in grace. We're under grace. Amen. We receive grow in grace. Thank you for watching our Faith, Hope, and Love television ministry sponsored by the new greenbook.biz. You can find all previous broadcasts on our YouTube channel by searching Faith Community Church Memphis. If you would like to donate a tax-deductible gift to our ministry, please visit our website at www.memphisfaith.com. Please join us next week for more family-centered teaching. Until then, on behalf of our pastor and the Faith Community Church family, have a great week, and please remember to keep walking, by faith.